been a little bit since I've done a video. I love my a7S III, which is what I'm shooting on here right now. And back in April, I placed an order for an FX6. Well, I mean like the first week of April. And we're in June. b &H, if you're listening, you know what I'm talking about, but we're not gonna get into that right now. So what I, I need a second camera for video. So I did a thing, I did a thing. Yep. So before we go any further, just to let you guys know, I'm the tactical traveler. I'm just a straight shooter who tells it like it is. Most of the gear that I talk about on my channel, I've purchased with my own money. Occasionally, very, very rarely, a company will send me a, a product and, and I'll disclose that. There's never any money exchanged. Just sometimes I get to keep the product, but I only take products usually that I want to try out. I'm interested in, and I'm a hundred percent going to tell you the truth about them. It's probably why I don't get a lot of free products. But anyways, if this kind of content interests you, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. It would help me out. It's the only way you can support my channel by watching my videos, subscribing, giving a thumbs up and hit that notification bell. Anyways, on to the FX3 and a little bit about what led me to purchase this camera. Okay, so I already said that, you know, the FX6 is taking forever to come and I have not canceled my order on that yet. Depending on how this camera performs for me, uh, the FX6 may not happen. It may get canceled. So what led me here was obviously the, the lack of the the FX6 coming in. I was getting a lot of photography work at the time and I needed a second photography camera. So that was why I rented the A7C and gave it a try, but the ergonomics just didn't work for me. They were too different. I rented a second A7 III a lot of times, but it just kept getting expensive for every event to do that. So I said, you know what? Let's get the A7S III. It can be my second photo camera, my primary video camera. Well, fast forward now, my video work is taking off and I need a second video camera. Another big pain in the butt is when I rig up this camera, the a7S III, I've got to put it in a cage, I've got the monitor, the V-mount, all the stuff on it to make it work. And then I have a photo job the next day, I got to take everything apart and get it back to bare bones to do a photo job. And then the very next day I might have another video job. It's just constantly breaking it down and it's just, I've done everything I can with NATO rails and quick releases to try and make it as fast as possible. But no matter what, it's still just a pain in the butt. I don't have a backup video camera that can hold a candle to this a7s3 my a7 III is my backup camera let's be honest the a7 III was a great camera in its time and it's still a really good camera i think the a7c is a better video camera right now if i would be really honest with you the color science and the autofocus improvements on that camera again go watch my video i needed a second camera since i ordered the fx6 this was going to become my a7s3 was going to become my gimbal camera and you know my handheld or second camera however i used it I'm so happy now that, that I can have a dedicated camera just for video. So this camera is gonna be 100% kept rigged for video. I ordered the Condor Blue cage and a few accessories from them. Of course, like everything else for this camera, it's on back order. I already got my little Sennheiser mic on here. Just uh, I just put a, uh, a NATO rail, I don't know if you can see that or not, a NATO rail here right on the top because my Ninja monitor is on, on the A7. S3 right now, but I basically use this little guy right here as a little monitor mount and I just, boom, here you go. So I'm set up like this generally with this camera. I've got my monitor back here, you know, with this monitor mount and plenty of space. To, this is something a lot of people don't talk about, but you need one of these. It's like a spacer for Sony cameras. It goes around the microphone and it makes it fill in the space because the cameras like this, same things on the FX6, the diameter is bigger on the Sony microphones. So they don't fit. You just put the little rubber thing in here. You're good to go. It's nice. It's like a little shock mount. You don't get a lot of handling noise. And then here, I don't remember where this came from. This was some kit that I had bought back in the day. I always save all the extra parts. It goes right here in the side and it gives me, see, like a little cold shoe. So if I want to run my road wireless go slid into here, I had this mic. I had four channels of audio happening and they all came out great, but it still allows me, as you can see, to open no problem clearing this, no problem clearing this. I can use all the ports on the side, so this does not create a problem. I wish I could remember what this came with. I think I bought like an L bracket for my A7 III, and this was like an extra little piece in the kit, and I keep all that stuff in like a junk drawer for, for cage parts. I mean, this will work just fine like this. I kind of have grown accustomed to the hand strap I have for the cage on my uh, A7S III, and I'm looking forward to the Condor Blue cage coming just 
It'll make it a little bit easier. Give me a few more options for mounting stuff. But for right now, this actually works for me pretty good. So one of the first things I noticed about this was the button layout is completely different. It definitely would be hard to transition for photos to make this. So if you're a photographer and you want a second photo camera, like you were in the situation like I was in, and you also wanted to do video, get the a7S III because this, the viewfinder helps. I will miss that a little bit, but it's not a deal breaker for me. It's definitely ergonomically, it feels different. The button layout is significantly different and the way the menu functions, is, uh, it's a little bit different like the, the shooting modes. They have that flexible, it's kind of weird how you can lock things up. I think um, Chris Brockhurst, I believe, his channel, he made a good video kind of explaining the issues he was having with the different wheels. And I've got an A92 now, I've got the A7S III, I've got an A7 III, and I've got this camera. And I've just got them all set up the same. So I bypassed some of that stuff that's that's labeled on here where it has iris, white balance, and ISO. I, I don't care, I have my way. I set it up that matches all the other cameras. I don't think you have to, to set it up a certain way. You set up the way it works for you. For monitor mount, this monitor, just for illustrative purposes, is one of the monitors I used to use my A7 III. It's the Andy Cine 4K. Very affordable monitor. It does a lot. It doesn't have waveforms, which kind of bothered me, but it has false colors and histogram and a lot of stuff. It'll definitely get you going right like this. This is, this is how I'd run this thing. It doesn't really affect me holding the handle with this monitor. I'm going to use the camera like so, watching with the monitor. If I need to get lower, I can tilt this monitor down. If I need to go higher, I can tilt the monitor up. You know, here I can turn the monitor. If I wanted to put it forward, so basically I'm saying is you don't have to get a cage. You don't have to have a cage with this thing. That little NATO rail going this way, the monitor mount, doesn't really create a problem for me. Let's put this camera on the sticks real quick. See if you stuck around and give you a little test here with the XLR microphone coming out of it with the uh, Sennheiser. So let's see how that sounds. Okay, so now we are on the FX3. I matched the white balance the best I could. The lighting hasn't changed. The position of the camera hasn't changed. The lens is exactly the same. I'm using the Sony 35 millimeter f1.8, which is pretty much my favorite video lens for this camera. Here's the trusty a7S III. Now, the viewfinder on this thing is amazing. Like a lot of people say it's better than real life. As good as the a7S III is, it can be better. If you're talking just for usage for video alone, I think the FX3 is probably a better camera. A couple things that right off the bat, I could tell you I wish would have been a little different. I wish that they would have put a really high end screen display on this. It's got the same old crappy ass screen. Why couldn't you update the display? If they would have done that, like got rid of the viewfinder and then updated that display to a really high quality display, I think that along with the handle, the XLR inputs would have really pushed this camera over the top. The screen, it's not that bright. It's hard to see in the sun and it's just not that good quality. I always have to use a monitor when I use one of these Sony cameras for video. Maybe even a little bit bigger screen that could have made this thing a little bit more C70-ish in size, a little bit, you know, maybe not as big as a C70, but big enough to have maybe, you know, a little bit bigger screen. Not not Blackmagic big, but, you know, somewhere in between where it's at now in the Blackmagic. Would have been kind of cool with a real high level display. Compared to what we were doing before, this audio now is coming from the Sennheiser boom mic going into the XLR. So the preamps are gonna be better. Everything's gonna be a little bit better. In order for me to use this higher quality microphone, I've got a normally, put it on my Zoom H6, and then sync everything in post, which is not a really big deal, but you know, this takes a step out of my post-production, which is gonna be faster. Anything I can do to make myself more efficient, you know, having the XLR input on the camera and just piping the good quality audio right into the camera. Anyways, this has been probably a little longer than some other videos, but thank you for watching. I'll be making more videos about the FX3 very soon, about the lenses I use, and about a bunch of new gear that I've just recently purchased. And I wanna share with you guys my thoughts on that stuff. There's a lot of things. We've got the Ronin RS2 video coming up and I've got a couple more microphone videos coming your way. So hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.